My name is Tina and I want to welcome you to our first introduction video for the Havana Crochet Along. First of all, I really want to thank you for your wonderful comments and enthusiasm when we launched the call. It's really heartwarming and I'm so happy to see how many of you are going to join us and I'm super excited to see all your color choices and, and your versions of my Havana. Also, I want to thank the lovely Emma May and all the wonderful admins in Pippin Crochet Club you really are the best, and I'm so happy that you invited me to to host to to have my Havana Afghan in your crochet along. So thanks a lot. You're just you're great. Okay, so in this little introduction video, what I wanted to do was to tell you a little bit about the pattern, how it became to be, and also a lot of you have been asking about the colorway that I used in my my big scrap Havana Afghan. So I'm going to ex explain to you the technique that I used to arrange the colors. First of all, the name Havana is because um, the Havana, the city, was the inspiration. Here, when walking the streets, everything is just filled with colors. Like, bursting bright colors everywhere you look, and a lot of patterns everywhere. There are tiles everywhere you look, with different patterns, and the railings for the Balkans, and it's just so beautiful. And for me, as a Nordic, I'm not used to this. And the most amazing thing is that when it all comes together, it makes this beautiful home. And that was the idea behind the, pat behind the pattern. I wanted to use a lot of colors, a lot of different patterns, and then when it all comes together, it makes a lovely home. The technique that we use here is the mosaic crochet technique, which I'm going to explain in detail in the second tutorial. And uh, as you can see here, um, the pattern shows on the front side, and then on the back side, it's striped like this. And you work it all from the front side, from right to left, and then you have to break the yarn when you get to the end of the row, and then you start again at the other side. Don't worry about all the ends, then I know a lot of you have been worrying about the ends, because uh, I designed the blanket with this in mind, so I did a double border, which you can choose to make it small, or the whole one, and all the ends just go in here. So no worries about the endless ends, <laughs> and sewing them in. Okay, so let's talk about the colors. There are so many ways you can go. I first published my pattern Havana Afghan in my book Havana Hack Book, which means Havana Crochet Book, back in 2016. And as you can see here, the first edition was just with a simple border, and then I used two colors for each of the seven patterns. You can see them here. So there's always just two colors. That's one way to go. And then I wanted to show you this here also, which is a new project that I'm working on. It's going to be the Havana Shawl. And I wanted to do that in just two colors, all the way through. So here you can see how the pattern goes with just one repetition. I'm not, I'm not finished, but I have the first, I'm on the fifth pattern here. Just with two colors. And that's, that's going to be really pretty for a, a blanket, I think, as well. Just wanted to show you to give you an idea. But what we're really going to do here is show you how to use your stash to work your Havana. I love working with, with scraps and, and my stash for, for the Alpens that I make and I, I almost, I never, I always use some kind of scraps. So, here I have my cotton stash. I'm just going to use this to show you. You can mix, for example, cotton and wool and whatever you have. If there is a little bit of difference in the weight of the yarn, that's fine if it's not too much. Then just always take care to use the same number of hook, you know? And if you have a, some yarn that is like a really nice color and it's a lot finer, then you can always use it double. So don't worry about that. If you always use the same hook, it should be okay. And if you have a finer yarn, then take care that using the finer yarn for A and then at the B in that place of the pattern, you use the, the regular, the normal type, right? So I'm going to put this out here. Let's just start with here, for example, all my blues. And you can start with blue and pink, for example. You can start with any color you like, really. So just pick two to start with and then you go lining up all your blues 
and all your pinks. And like I said before, this is just a simple fade with a small tiny tricks that is a double fade. So it's a double fade with go fading, both colors are going to be fading. So I'm going to line these up here and you can do the same with your stash. Okay, so now you see, I've lined up my stash, just roughly to give you an idea how to do this. And you see how here we start with red, going into pink, going into purple and then blue again. Here we start with the blue, going to turquoise, green, yellow, and like this you can just keep going. I really like neon, so I always have some neon colors in, in my work. And as you can see, you can use the smaller scraps as well, because it doesn't really matter in the big picture. It can be only one or two rounds of some colors. It doesn't really matter. But what you do have to take care of is to always think that color A at any given time and color B at any given time have a good contrast. And what I mean by contrast is, like for example, these two, that you have a a big difference between the two colors so that the pattern really pops and another thing that you should take care of is that the two colors that are lining up together always go nicely together this is of course a matter of taste as well obviously so just always think do I like this these here two together and then you can go chaining and you can mix, mix it up as well but that's the basic technique for the the double fades and i'm really 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 excited to see all your scrap projects as well because like i said i love working my projects with scraps because it just gives extra depth to have different shades of each color and it's also so much fun to use leftover yarn from something that you made for your kid or for your mom or whatever and then you remember you know that part of the blanket oh yeah that's the sweater i, I, I made for my mom last christmas you know <laughs> so that's all there is Thank you so much and again I'm so much looking forward to seeing all your versions. Ciao! Hermano